on these occurrences, North Korea behaves outrageously, or so Washington concludes. Washington acts imprudently, asserting that it's acting justifiably. Misunderstanding, uncertainty, and confusion compound the problem. And China and the ROK attempt to help and eventually get the parties back to the table. No, I'm not talking about the ongoing Macau bank flap, even though it sounds very much like it, but rather the 2002 flap over North Korea's uranium enrichment program. In October of 2002, after North Korea's reported admission to American officials that it had been pursuing a clandestine weapons development program involving highly enriched uranium, and I've always thought the reporting of that was confusing, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman asserted that the suspicion of China's possible provision of nuclear materials to North Korea was totally groundless. Less than a week later, the foreign ministry spokesman, seeking to protect Pyongyang from reactions in the West, stated that China has always held that dialogue and negotiation are the effective ways to settle the North Korean nuclear issue. He emphasized the continued importance of the agreed framework in maintaining stability and peace on the Korean Peninsula. China supports the peninsula being nuclear free, he said. For many observers, it seemed as though China's opposition to North Korea's possession of nuclear weapons was still vacillating or half-hearted. I'm going to go over this with you because I think it really paints a picture of the Chinese position with respect to this, this issue. It was in late 2003, and we delayed it until after the SARS crisis had passed, if you remember that. A senior Institute for Foreign Policy Analysis delegation, there were three of us, visited the 10 think tanks and university centers in Shanghai and Beijing doing the most serious work on the North Korean nuclear issue, including the National Defense University. And here's a synopsis of what we heard. For the first time, we heard serious concerns that a nuclear device from North Korea could end up in the hands of a non-state terrorist faction and be used on China. I've underlined the top three that are really quite pertinent. The prospect of a nuclear Japan and South Korea were the biggest factors in the newly unequivocal position that the peninsula must be nuclear free. We were told China will not tolerate a nuclear North Korea. This strong position is a radical departure from 2001 when, you may recall, I was told that the development of nuclear weapons by North Korea was highly undesirable but understandable because of the threat from the U.S. and not directly threatening to China. So a radical change here. China has made a great effort to persuade North Korea that nuclear weapons are not necessary for North Korean security and that possessing them is not in North Korea's interest. Let me just put the rest of these up here, and you can see them as I go, but those top three are the ones I wanted to emphasize. A real uh, interest of mine has been this regional security framework. I think we could be headed for one. Of course, we were told, don't expect regime change. Once again, they wouldn't support the KPA if it undertook an attack. that they were not opposed to unification, but they weren't pushing it. They were more concerned about stability. And China would keep sending aid if North Korea went to the kept the state of six-party talks. And they reminded us of the refugee problem. This was, of course, in 2003. I don't think it's changed a great deal from that time. That's the reason I chose to. I, and we spent about two weeks listening to all the people who felt they were best connected and so forth, and I think we got very accurate information. So I think that, that list of 10, that's the reason I bothered to put it up that way. You'll see some later um, amplification of that. In the mid uh, part of this decade, it became all about the six-party talks. 